Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at Image Tutorials and uh, today I'm going to show you something uh, in Maya that I personally think is very very cool. So here we go. Uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, interactive playback in combination with NCloth. Now that probably, uh, if it rings a bell then you don't have to uh, watch this tutorial and if it doesn't, you know, here we go. So what I'm going to do to illustrate that is I'm just going to quickly set up a scene. Just create a ground plane here. Hit 5 for shaded mode. And I'm just going to simply create a couple of objects. Okay. So just a cube. And, you know, just to get something into our scene. All right. Now, the uh, star of this production, so to speak, will be this object, okay? So I'm just going to pull that up, something like that, okay? And I'm going to go to my Poly Cylinder 2 tab, and I'm going to increase the subdivisions in my height to, let's say, 30. All right. Now, what is this all about? Normally, when you create an end cloth uh, object, right, and you want it to use it as a still frame, if you know what I mean, then it's kind of hard to um, anticipate how it's going to behave and how it's going to end up, okay? And I'll just uh, show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got this object selected. I'm going to go to my uh, animation tab. Actually, uh, sorry, to my end dynamics tab. I got this selected. I'm going to go to end mesh, create end cloth. So this object is now an end cloth object. Okay. I'm going to zoom in to my top here. Right click, go to vertex, drag select these top vertices. I'm going to go to end constraint and hit transform. And then I'm going to select my object, go to Fields, and hit Gravity. So, kind of a standard setup, right? Now, if I add, let's say, a thousand frames to my scene here, right? And I were to hit Play, you're going to see that, and I'll, I'll just uh, do a close-up here, something like that. And I'll go back to Frame 1. You can see that as soon as I hit Play, it's kind of wobbling a little bit. So you can see that this is uh, an end cloth object. Now, what if I were to drag this and move this around? As you can see, it's not really doing anything, right? So how is this going to behave if I want this object to, uh, for example, uh, lie on top of these objects here? Now, first of all, I need to select these objects, all of them, right? and go up to, uh, let me think, uh, where is it, where is it, uh, and mesh, right, and create passive collider. So, if I were to drape this cloth on top of these objects, they would uh, collide with the objects and we would see that okay, right? But what I really want is to see how this object will react real time, if you know what I mean, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to my solver, and solver, interactive playback, and select that. And now while this is playing, I'm just going to drag this up here, and look at this. You know, during my animation, I can just move this around, right? So if I were to move this down, it would drape down on my plane here. And I can just drag this around and let it interact, you know, with anything that's going on on my scene. And I'll just pull this back in. Right? So we'll just do that once more. Okay. We're going to go back to frame one. So right now it's right here. Okay. And we're going to hit play. Drag select that. Sorry, forgot to select 
Go to Add Solver, Interactive Playback, okay, and here we go. So you can just drop this down, and I'll zoom in a bit so you can see that. And you can just move that in your scene and have it react with anything that's going on there. Now, I personally thought that that was pretty cool, so hopefully you guys like this as well. Now, let's say you uh, find that your cloth is in a position where you want to keep it, like this, for example. You simply hit stop, right? It's lying like that. You select your object, object mode, edit, delete by type, and delete the history. All right now, it's just a stationary object. Even if you go back and hit play again, now it's just a stationary object, all right? Now, that is a really cool feature, and there are a couple of things you can do with that. Let's say you want to have a curtain positioned in a certain way, or a flag, or a banner, or anything like that. You can just uh, real-time have it, you move it and react with your scene until you're at a point where you think that is what you're looking for. Stop your animation, delete the history, and you've got the exact object that you're looking for. All right, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys like it, and see you guys next time. Bye.